Hello everybody, Canva has come out with a brand new set of AI tools and in today's video I'm going to talk about its free online AI image generator. If you don't know what Canva is, it's a design company based in Australia and a lot of creatives, uh, that means YouTubers, bloggers, use its products to design things like logos, posters, flyers. I personally use it to design my YouTube thumbnails as well. Before I get started, I should mention that I'm on the free version of Canva. I don't use Canva Pro yet because I have not had the need to use it yet. And you don't really need a pro account to use this AI image generator. Well, up till now, most of the AI generations that I have used in my thumbnails have come from products like Playground AI, which has a decent number of free credits for you to use and try out different things. And I personally recommend Playground AI as a good place to practice your AI art prompting. If you don't know much about Playground AI, I recommend you come to my playlist section and go to this playlist called Playground AI where I have a lot of videos explaining all the different features it has. But today's video is not about Playground AI. Today's video is about Canva and I want to test it out to see if it is decent enough so that I don't have to go to Playground AI to generate my images and then come to Canva to import them to create my thumbnails. To get started, I recommend you to log into canva.com. If you don't have an account yet, it's free to create like you see. And after you log in, come to this link called canva.com slash AI image generator. I'll have this in my description as well. After you come there, click this button called generate AI images. It's going to open another message says bring images in your head to life with text to image. And there's a button called try it out. Just click try it out. And that should open up your text to image generator. Now, if you want to try out different things on your pictures like text or uh, anything you uploaded, you can always come back to the image generator using this icon in the bottom called text to image. Uh, as you see, the menu here looks very similar to Playground AI. If you click create on Playground AI, it has a similar kind of design, but there's a lot less functionality here. So it looks like a minimalistic version of Playground AI to me. It doesn't really have an option to add any exclusions like Playground AI has here. If you don't know about exclusions, just go to my playlist and see this video called Prompt Exclusions. Now let me go over the structure a little bit. Uh, so there's a space here where you type your prompt. Uh, there's a place here to try an example. So if you click this, it's going to generate a random prompt for you to try out and work with. If you keep clicking this, it's going to keep generating new prompt ideas and it does it one at a time. But most of these are to brainstorm. You can't really refer it to give you prompt ideas on a specific theme. If you want to have prompt ideas on the category of dogs, you can't really tell the prompt generator that I want prompt ideas on dogs. So this is a generic random prompt generator. So it just does a collection of words and throws it out here. Next, there is a bunch of styles to choose from. This is similar to the filters that you have in Playground AI right here. I think Playground AI's filters are a lot more advanced and a lot more elaborate. And I've done a walkthrough of most of them in my playlist here. Just from a first glance, most of these filters look like they're in the artistic world. So this is fine art. There's four of them there. There's a bunch of them which are in the digital art category. And there's only two or three of them which are in the realism category. So like photo or filmic or vibrant might be in the realistic category. Everything else is more in the digital design art space. And that kind of makes sense because Canva is a design company. I don't think it's expecting its clients to use a lot of realism in its generations. Like if they're doing something like a logo or a thumbnail, a lot of time they would do generations like say a 3D model or concept art which would be more relevant for branding or logos. Just like I mentioned in my Leonardo AI videos that a lot of its tools are geared towards game assets versus realism. And Midjourney, I think, is one of the main products which is really good at realistic pictures. But Canva is more towards logos and designs and Leonardo AI is more about game assets. So I think the number of styles it has is pretty appropriate for what its users have need for. Uh, the next section I have here is the aspect ratio. So if you put something like a square or a portrait, this might be for phone designs. This might be for logos and the landscape might be for thumbnails. So for my prompt, I'm going to first try a random one. So I'm going to try a close up of a cocktail on a bar. So I'm going to just try that without any style. All right, I have some cocktails. The images are not super high quality, as you can see. They're using stable diffusion, I think. I do think you need to work a lot on the prompt to generate what you need. 
versus relying on the software to just do the work for you. So let me click start over. This time let me try generating something myself and I'm going to use a character I've used in a lot of my Leonardo videos and I'm going to work on that character and evolve it a little bit. And the final image is what you're going to see on my thumbnail for this video anyways. So I'm going to do female alchemist in the forest and I'm not going to choose any style. I want to see what it generates first. Okay, so the first few generations are pretty underwhelming. Uh, there's issues with the face here and face here too. I think all of the faces here don't look that great. And you might have seen in one of my videos for Leonardo AI and how you can improve the quality of faces. I'm going to try one of those features. So I'm just going to say close up. So most of the time when you do close up, it has to focus on the face. And when that happens, a lot of its computing power goes towards improving the quality of the face. I think there might be some issues with the hands here, but the overall face quality and structure does look much better, at least in this one. This one has some issues with the eyes and this one with the hands, but I think this one looks pretty proper. I don't think there's any issues in this one either way but i don't know if she looks like an alchemist so i'm gonna try female alchemist in the forest holding a bottle all right i think i have this image which i can work with but again there's an issue here which is a feature missing here which i would do on playground ai i can't really use image to image there's no option to upload this image and then proceed with it. So I have to do new generations or just use any image that I generate in my main prompting. And let me try something else this time. So let me try changing the ethnicity. So I'm gonna say Nigerian female alchemist in the forest holding a bottle close up, click. All right, I think uh, the faces and hands look kind of better in these ones. I think I like this one the most if you zoom in a little you're gonna see that there are tiny issues with the face but overall it is not as malformed as some of the images you just saw me generate a few minutes ago by the way every single image you click is now available for you to download so I did not click the one on the left here but I did click the one here so if you go to your upload section and you click on these three dots on any image you can just click download right away now let me go back to my prompt and change it a little bit and let's try a style this time so i'm going to try the filmic style and do a japanese female alchemist dancing in the forest close up all right these came out pretty cool uh, there's a lot of issues there's issues with the hands and this one and the eyes there's too many fingers here i think this one looks pretty artistic so i'm gonna go ahead to my uploads again and click download ideally i would have liked to use this image right here and try to fix those hands and try to do that on an editor but i don't think canva has anything like that but maybe i'll try it out later on playground ai or leonardo so i'm going to click download on that one anyways because i do like the general vibe of this image i think this is very magical looking all right let me change this image to female alchemist to holding a paint brush and let's try concept art just for fun I think these look much better. I like this one quite a bit. Yeah, I think this is giving me the magical vibe I was looking for in my images. Uh, actually, I like this one as well, but I think there's some issues with the face and I can't fix that, but I would like to fix the face and the hands here to improve them a little bit. Same with this one. I think there's really good background, but what I would have done is kind of try to extend this image on the left using the AI canvas and try to do some outpainting and try to expand the scene and see how the rest of her looks like. I'm gonna go back to the fine art section and choose stained glass. All right, um, I like it, but for completely different reasons. I think if I were to start a website about female alchemists, this would be the perfect logo. This is really good as a logo for something more artistic or this one an alchemist holding something in her hands maybe some potion bottles see how this texture image generator is really good if you just don't try to compare it with mid journey because it's 
not in that category it's more for logos and designs for brands so if you're trying to sell something in the art category i think it would be really good so a good use case would be to get all of these downloaded and then upscaled using a different software and there's other softwares out there and i'll make videos on upscalers later but if you upscale all of these pictures i think they can be sold as posters or on a t-shirt or on a cup so even though i liked this design the best for something like an artistic painting i think an unexpected winner for my generations today is this one and i did not expect anything like this for a female alchemist or even this one but i hope you understood how the text to image generator works and what use cases you can use this for i might come out with a different series for a whole set of use cases for each of these styles for instance i might make a video just on the watercolor style and explain you five or ten use cases you can use those generations for but i think right now most people are just trying out these different styles as a way to compare and see if they like it or not but i think there's value in each and every one of these styles i don't think any of these styles are useless all of them have their place all of these softwares are good in specific categories so i encourage you to do a bit of brainstorming and come up with different use cases for these different styles and i don't think any of these image generators are good or bad they just need to find where they fit and with that message i'll end today's video if you got some value from it please click the like button and subscribe to my channel i have a lot more videos coming up till the next one thank you so much